My name's Heidi. I am one of the librarians that works in the Launchpad. It's really exciting to be back in the building right now, getting to present for all of you from here. Um, as we kind of get settled in to figuring out how everything goes, it's kind of a bit of a new normal for all of us. Okay. So I'm gonna make a transition to my table so I can start showing you about the whole process of paper marbling. Um, we're going to be doing a variation of this that is very easy to do with supplies you typically will probably have at home. Um, and so I'm gonna move my camera now. It might get a little wiggly and wobbly, but um, just ask you to have some patience while I get it settled in and then we'll be able to go from there while I show you paper marbling. All right, so first off, this is a very, not very, but it can be a little bit of a messy process. So I always recommend that you start um, with, let's see, let me get this, you know, covering whatever work surface you're going to be um, using. Give that a nice cover of some kind. It could be um, underneath my brown paper. I have a tablecloth as well just to protect your work surface. I also would typically recommend that you use gloves. I forgot mine in another room, so I don't mind getting paint on my fingers. If that's something you're not comfortable with or you don't wanna get any kind of dye on your fingers, go ahead and you can use gloves as well. So let me get settled a little bit. All right, so some of the ingredients or things that you'll wanna need supplies for this project are the main thing is shaving cream. And the shaving cream acts as basically a base that you will be putting all of your colors into. If you are used to regular paper marbling, typically you use water with some kind of suspension material that allows the paint to, or the dyes, to float on the surface before you put your paper in. In place of that, we are using the um, shaving cream. You'll also want some kind of pigment. So I'm using basic matte acrylic paints. You could also use assorted, um, you can use different food coloring if that's what you happen to have at home. You can use just basic food coloring. Um, something I've seen, I've also used in the past were gel food colors. If you do a lot of baking, you may have those sitting around. I usually do a mixture of those with your gel food color, a little bit of water, and then you can splash that onto your, your base. Um, I'll explain what I used straws for depositing some color, so I'll talk a little bit about that some more. You'll want something to drag your paint or your color, your pigment around through the, the shaving cream. So I like using chopsticks, you could use um, toothpicks here. If you have wooden skewers, those work. Um, you can also create little tools. So this is, oh, let me get it over. There we go. This is chopsticks, or sorry, toothpicks that I've taped together. And then you can use that as a way to drag through just to give it a different look. Um, then you'll want some kind of scraping, smearing um, tool. So I have these, I found this really nice little spatula set at the dollar store. Or if you just happen to have some little craft sticks around those work, you could use a regular spatula um, from your kitchen. I will say anything that you choose to use, you need to be, to either feel comfortable never using it again to cook with or feel comfortable with getting it cleaned really well. And then you'll need some kind of item to use as a scraper. So you could use those same um, craft sticks or something like a ruler. So those are the basic objects. So like I said, you need your medium to float everything in. So that's your cream. You need pigment. You need some tools to apply your pigment potentially. Some stylus type of tools, some spreading tools, and finally something to scrape. Okay. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. Thank you again for your patience. Doing things live is definitely a little bit of a different process than getting to take, do multiple takes, film it, and put up a video on the internet. So I'm gonna pull 
So one thing you want to also you get is some kind of pan. You could use um, the regular kind of sheet pan that you might have at home, or I found these little uh, aluminum sheet pans at the dollar store as well. It's a set of two for a buck, so 50 cents each. You'll want something like that that you can um, put your shaving cream in. And what I'm gonna do is give that a little bit of a shake. And I'm just gonna start going. Just gonna get a good amount on there. And then using your spreading tool, you'll get a nice layer of it and spread it out as thinly as possible. You don't have to be super thin, but you wanna get it spread out as smoothly as possible. That's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, but you wanna get it um, the smoother, the better, but it's pretty forgiving because once you start pushing, um, applying pressure to this, once your paper is down, it will go through the foam and be able to pick up anything that maybe is on a slightly different level or at a different height. Okay, and once you have it smooth, this first round, what I'm going to do is just show you the process of, um, got some paper towels here. So I will go ahead and wipe that off. And I'm gonna pick, let's see. I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna do a white. Just cause I wanna show an example too with this. So I'm gonna do a white, um, I'm gonna do a blue, and then I'm going to do an orange. All you need to do is make sure your paint is nicely shaken up. And you're just going to squeeze a little bit so that you get drops all over your paint. And what's gonna happen for this as you go through this process is like any art, it's very individual. You may come up with a specific method. So maybe you're somebody who wants to do very, um, asymmetrical, you don't wanna do anything too random. I tend to just kind of drop where it goes, give it a squeeze and go with the random. I would also recommend not doing more than three to four colors. Um, if you start to get too many colors, things can get a little muddy. And then unless that's what you're going for, which that's okay too, you know, um, you might lose some of that definition of color, but if that's the look you want, that's also perfectly okay. So now I got my blue, just dropping it. I usually try to drop it in between um, colors. There's a lot of orange there, lots of orange up here. So I'm gonna do a little dollop there, orange there. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the white. And like I said, I'm doing this as in a, uh, a specific kind of example once I show you this process of what things can look like. So white on regular white paper is probably not necessarily gonna be the most exciting thing. And it's kind of hard to see on this very white shaving cream. But you can get a really cool look depending on the color of paper you're using, which I'll show you in a moment. So do a few more dollops of this white. It's really up to you how much color you wanna add, how much you wanna do. You could try and get really precise and do, um, let me see if I can do this do colors. So I don't know if you can see that. I did there an orange spot and I just did a blue spot in there. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of a white spot in that if I can, not perfect, but you could do something like that. And then when I take, say my toothpick, I'm gonna start with this. As you just drag it through, you're gonna kind of get some interesting, different looking designs as you pull that paint through. So to give you an idea of one way it can look. To start though, I usually like to go with my larger 
um, the largest tool. So either a wooden chopstick or a skewer is really good. And then just pick a point to start in some paint and you're just gonna drag through and drag it around, swirl it around, kind of to your heart's content. You just play with it. There's literally no way that you can screw this up. There's, you'll come out with something that looks really cool, really interesting. And what's, I think one of my favorite things about this kind of project is that it comes out unique. It's always gonna be a one of a kind piece. There's absolutely, at least no way I can think of where you can get the very exact same thing. Because depending on how the paint drops, depending on what happens, it's just, you're always gonna have a little bit of a different look. Um, while I go through with my stylus or whatever I'm using, so my chopstick in this case, sometimes I like to wipe off my excess and then go back and do some more. You can get really crazy with it, really wild and just kind of do whatever you want like that. Lots of circles. You could just do lines through it and see how those look. Um, if you want to take something smaller, so here's a tool. I call it a tool. Hopefully that will. So all it was was some toothpicks, a bit of tape, and now I have this kind of fork rake thing. So I can just go through and see what happens with my colors as I do that. Okay, and this looks pretty good to me. I'm, I'm happy with where it's at, which I'd say that should be your, I think, benchmark. Look at it, if you're happy with it, go ahead and stop there and you can get your paper. So I'm pretty happy with this. Like I said, I wanna show you three different examples of how your paint choices can look depending on what color um, material you're working with. So. I'm gonna start with this piece of white. This is just white, plain cardstock. And I'm going to, I think, stick it right over here. And I'm gonna just press down. And this is when having those gloves is really nice. And I'm gonna press down into the foam like that. Try and get as much contact between the paint and the paper as I can. Then I have this black cardstock right here. I'm gonna put that over here and see what happens. Same thing, just press it down really nicely. Let's see, and then I have this piece of brown paper. Give that a, a trim and we're gonna put that right down here and press down to make sure everything is in contact. Okay, and this, the next part is always, I think, where it almost feels like magic. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna pull up my white piece of cardstock. And when you flip it over, it kind of looks like not a lot yet. There's not much happening. It's kind of not necessarily boring, but it's just kind of like, oh, well, that's fine, I guess. But this is what I call the magic part, is when you take a scraping tool, so I'm gonna use the craft stick, and you just scrape off that excess foam, that shaving cream, to reveal the design that you have from your marble paper. And all of a sudden, all that foam, once it comes up, reveals a really nice, beautiful piece of art to get that marbling effect. All right, I'm gonna put this over here to the side and we're gonna take that black piece next that we had put down. So one thing to know, if you decide to use something like um, food coloring, food coloring is not gonna show up on a dark sheet of paper like this, um, black just because of the nature of um, with food coloring it's absorbing the color it's dyeing the paper rather than 
like with this where it's basically painting the paper. So it is an extra sense, it is paint. So with that, you can see how another piece of paper towel. Just gonna try and sponge some of the excess off so I don't get too much dragging of my paint. So, okay, our first comparison, if you look. So you can see how on here, that white paint I put down doesn't really make as much of a difference. It's not as visible because it's on white paper. But if we're looking at the black paper, you can definitely see where all that white showed up. So depending on what medium you're transferring your color to, you, um, you know, that'll make a difference about the choice of colors you make. And then let's take a look at that brown piece that we had used. Once again, you can see how being on the brown paper gives it just a little bit of change of um, tone and how it looks. And the thing with this brown paper too, as it dries, it's going to show up a little bit different even then. So my first set of examples of what you can do with these things afterwards. Oops. And just so you can see a good example of, so this is still my damp brown paper. This right here is my dried brown paper. So it will dry out a little bit and you'll get, it'll look a little bit different. So one thing I like to do with these marbled sheets of paper when I'm using them is to use punches and you can get different shapes out of them, so those different craft punches. So here I have a little leaf, and this I could use on, if I was doing cards, or if I wanted to do decorations with like creating, um, trying to think, something like maybe if I had bigger leaves especially, I could do um, something with like creating garlands for decoration, um, putting this on a card, like a handmade paper card, or all kinds of things. Uh, I also did the little flower symbol out of there. There we go. With my black one, I did a punch out with the star shape. So you can use these to do all kinds of different punches. This was my, this is my dry example. This is my drying example. All right, so then you'd be able to take that tray once you're done and um, give it a wash and let it dry and it'd be ready for, next, for your next project. All right, let's see. Okay, so another thing you can do, so this was using the full strength um, paints um, just as they are. I'm gonna get that out of the way and grab another tray. There we go. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. Let's make sure that tray is in the video. Perfect. Spread this out. So this time around, I'm going to, those colors, when you do them, they're straight up like that, are very vibrant. But that might not necessarily work for a project you're thinking about. You might want something that's a little bit more muted. Um, if you were doing, say, um, something where you wanted a pastel. So just something a little bit lighter colored. You could then, do a mixture of, I have these little containers here. 
you can do a mixture of the paint and water. So each of these little containers, I put some water in and then I added a good squeeze of paint and then stirred up to get them ready to apply to um, the medium I, or to apply to the shaving cream. So there are two ways when I was practicing this um, a few days ago, there were two ways I was doing it. And that was to take a straw and you know, when you try to get a little bit liquid in your straw and you just pipe up the other end and create that vacuum. All I was doing was putting the straw in here, blocking it up so I can get a little bit of the, the watery paint that I made and then just letting it drop. So unlike the, um, the paints, when you're dropping them out of the container, you do end up with bigger blobs, which is okay. You can also, as taking it, letting it drop out, and then giving it a few taps to help disperse any of that extra paint. Or you can take that stick that you did, that you used to stir, and just kind of shake it over. Um, you could use a paintbrush dipped into it and then um, pull the paintbrush back to kind of distribute and um, do a spray of colors. It's really up to you and the look you're going for. Okay, so I'm gonna take this um, teal, I suppose, color. So, and just like I was saying, you could always use this, give it a little bit of a flick and a tap. The best part of something like paper marbling too, is that you can experiment and try different things. Um, when it comes to using like the watered down paints, you can always try different ratios of water to, to paint. Okay, and then I'm gonna use this gray that I have. Because depending on you know the ratio, if you have more paint than water, it's the color is going to be a little bit more vibrant. Um, the less paint to water you have, of course, that or yes, the less paint you have in comparison to water, the less vibrant it will be. I'm gonna do it this way. And you can kind of see that it just doesn't show up as well on the, the shaving cream. So taking my tool again, I'm gonna go ahead and drag through, smear the paint around. I usually try to see like if there's a little cluster that's undisturbed, I try and make sure I go through that, swirl it. And I think I want maybe a little bit of more pink. Let's see what happens. I throw a few more dabs of pink in here. Swirl that around. I don't know if it'll do much, but we'll see. We'll find out. So like I was saying, you can um, just play around with this and experiment with the different techniques and methods. Um, and what's gonna be great, so now that I'm pretty happy with that and satisfied, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. Press down. You can experiment with the different techniques and um, you know, even if it's not perfect or you don't love what comes out, well, you learn a little bit from that and then your next project maybe is more of what you're looking for. And even if it's not exactly what you wanted, let's pull that up you still have a product that you can use in some way. So actually I can see right where I didn't press down enough. So there's some little blank spots there. 
And I'm gonna take my scraping tool and just go ahead and scrape that off. Like I said, this is a little messy. So if you need, wear an apron of some kind or um, just be prepared for the mess. Wear gloves if you need them. And you can see here now, we still have a pretty nice um, marbling effect. It's just lighter and more subtle than our last one was. Okay, we're coming up on the 30 minute mark. So I wanted to show you, um, I had mentioned that I showed you a few examples of what you can do with the punches, the craft punches. Um, some other nice things that I like are, if you go to the store, to a craft store, you can usually find blank cards done in a variety of um, paper types. Um, you always want to make sure that don't, when you choose paper, pick something that's more of a matte. You don't really want a glossy. You want something that will be able to hold on to um, the pigments. I don't think it's as big of a problem if you're using paint, but if you're using something like a food coloring, that will affect it um, since it's supposed to absorb those colors. But this is a pre-printed or like a pre-folded card that came in a set that was picked up at a craft store, probably a Michaels, and you can do your colors on that and still write across the front of them when they are dry. Um, you can, if you do a full tray of colors, you can get a matching set by laying your card and your envelope in at the same time. So I have some nice little, a nice card and envelope ready to go someplace. Because it's paper and it is getting damp as it dries, you're going to have some of that curling. It's totally okay. You can just put it under a book or something heavy and that will help it to relax out. Um, something that I liked a lot was I found these um, journals on, um, they're bullet journals that I found on Amazon. And you can, um, they're this paper, so you can actually decorate them by marbling them as well. So then you have a nice little journal to write in that you've decorated and you can write on the cover as well if you'd like to. Um, one last example, just to show you what it looks like. This is an example of using um, food coloring. You do it the exact same way you would with the paint. Um, let me give you, oh, let me show you kind of what that looks like. I'm not gonna do a full piece out of this, but just very similar to how you would with paint, you're just gonna go ahead and do drops of your food coloring. They do, because it's so liquidy, they do spread differently. So that's always something to take in mind. Actually, I'll go ahead and do this one. We'll do a real quick example with this red and yellow. You can always re, if you want, you can always um, reuse what is left over um, from your project before, but just remember that any of that color that's in there will transfer potentially. So I'm just gonna give this quick wiggle. I'm gonna do some little, lots of little swirls. And then another sheet of paper. Make sure you press it down really well. I might end up with some of that teal or gray or pink from my last one because I'm reusing, but we'll just have to see what happens. I'm always, always, always very pro. Try it out. This is so pretty, it's like sunset colors. Try it out, see what happens. There are no mistakes. You know, the old Bob Ross, adage of there are no mistakes, only happy accidents, I think is the best way to live life when you're doing art. Because then you end up with something cool like this where, you know, yeah, I do have some of that teal that came through, I can see. 
but it looks really, in my opinion, this is, I'm happy with this. I have some of that teal here on the edges and some of the gray. And I think it looks really cool and I think it'll be a nice little touch. So this is using um, that uh, food coloring for this one. So both of them work. Use whatever you have on hand in your house. Um, this is one of those projects that hopefully you don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of tools. You'll be able to do it almost immediately if you want to. I answer it. Otherwise, right. it was absolutely wonderful to host you all virtually again back in the launch pad. Um, we do miss seeing all of your faces and helping everyone out and just getting to say hi. Um, when everything is a little more settled and when the building opens and the launch pad is open, please stop by, say hi. Um, until then, if you're working on this project at home, um, please uh, take some pictures, upload it to your Instagram or Facebook and make sure to tag hashtag ITPLDMade, ITPLDMade um, so that we can see it because we wanna see all your projects. The best part of getting to work with everybody and getting to teach you guys new skills is getting to see your final product. It's the most fun part. I love seeing what everybody makes. So make sure you tag that, hashtag ITPLDMade, so that we can take a look at it.